Here is Oregon, a place to lift and celebrate the very best of Oregon. Thanks to our exclusive auto partner, Subaru, for being a proud supporter. Get the good stuff every day at hereisoregon.com or follow us on your favorite social media platform at Here is Oregon. Share the good. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we're taking you out to the coast at Fort Stevens State Park to talk about mushroom hunting. That's right, Vicki. You know, we took a trip out to Fort Stevens, you and I did, recently to shoot our next episode of the Peak Northwest video series all about mushroom foraging on the coast. So we went in, I guess it was about the middle of November, which as I understand it is toward the end of peak mushroom season. So I I don't don't know about you, but when we went into it, I was a little nervous about what we were going to find. But Mm -hmm. as it turns out, um, we had, I think, pretty good luck. (laughs) I mean, I don't know what you think, but it seemed to go pretty well. Yeah, we we had great luck. Uh, All that to say, it didn't hurt that we had two experienced mushroom guides <laughs> with us, <laughs> uh, both park rangers at Fort Stevens. And so shout out to Dane and Chad for taking us out on this excursion. Um, it was such a great time. I learned so much. And this was my first time mushroom hunting. I really seriously had a blast. Yeah. And, you know, we really wanted to have Dane, um, who's sort of the, the go-to mushroom guy at Fort Stevens. We wanted to have him on the show today, but he is off elk hunting right now. Couldn't join us. So we'll have to um, share the experience, just the two of us. And Vicky, I didn't have a ton of mushroom foraging experience. Like I've gone out before, I've yeah. poked around, but I've never really sort of done, you know, the full you know, go for something in particular that's edible, harvest it the right way, cook it up. You know, there's like oh, that whole process is something that, that was still pretty new to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was very glad that we had them by our side uh, throughout our, our mushroom hunting experience. And when we got there, I was so appreciative for Dane to not only like talk us through what we'd be looking for, but, you know, because he regularly leads hikes um, guiding people through mushroom hunting. Um, he like laid out all these guides for us, these different books, um, and then examples of different mushrooms that he found earlier, um, and stuff to keep an eye out for. So it was like such a great experience just from the beginning. Oh, was so good. You know, and it was, it, it made it really easy. I think a lot of people, when they do mushroom foraging or when they think about mushroom foraging, the idea is like, I'm going to tromp off through the woods you know, checking under logs and brush, trying to find, you know, these mushrooms. And that honestly is most, I think, people's experience with it. But when you go out with a guide like this, and especially at a park like Fort Stevens, you, you get it. I think the advantage is really have going with someone who knows where to look already. And for us who are sort of beginning and for us who wanted to, you know, get good video and not spend all day trying to get it, it was really nice because Dane knew exactly where to go and he knew exactly what we were going to find when we got there. Yeah, he definitely was able to scout out some solid spots for us to go on our hunt. Um, and, he, he, you know, he showed us a few of his top secret spots, which we super <laughs> appreciate. Um, and yeah, I he was just such a wealth of knowledge. I just couldn't stop listening to everything he was telling us. Um, so Jamie, why don't you tell us what, what kind of made Fort Stevens and what makes the coast in general, great places for mushroom hunting? Well, we were talking to Dane about that. And I think what, what makes the coast nice is you have a lot of moisture coming in. You've got sort of more temperate climates. So you're not going to get a lot of those really early cold freezes right off the bat in the season. And the, the sandy soil apparently is very beneficial for a lot of species of mushrooms. So um, you know, all of that along with sort of like different kinds of trees that grow there of pines and firs and, you know, other shrubs, it, you know, there's sort of a, a dense forest in a lot of parts of the coast. And this is like, apparently just like, you know, mushroom paradise. 
So Fort Stevens, for those who aren't aware, I mean, we've talked about it a bunch in the podcast, is a, a very large state park um, right on the northwestern tip of Oregon. So it's there on the mouth of the Columbia River. And there are just a ton of hiking trails and paved biking trails. And there's, you know, beaches and jetties and forests and campgrounds and lakes and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. So in mushroom season, you'll see people spreading out basically everywhere looking for all kinds of mushrooms. Um, so, I mean, chanterelles you can get there. Uh, you can find uh, white matsutakes and porcinis, and you can find, um, you know, fly agaric mushrooms and um, sort of notoriously uh, psilocybin mushrooms also grow there. Some people are looking for that. So, I mean, there's just people who are looking for all different kinds of stuff, and all different kinds of places, and it can be kind of a lot. You know, when we were there, um, right before the, you know, our guides were going to go take us out to show their special white Matsutake spot, there was this woman there who was like trying to <laughs> like, you know, bribe the <laughs> the rangers to get to give them the information. She's like, hey, I'll, I'll give you some hot sauce if you tell me what your, your special spot is. <laughs> and uh, Dane was just kind of like, you know, lips closed, looking the other way, like, mm -hmm, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> And uh, later when we set off on the trail, he was like, yeah, I had to shake her off our, off our trail. <laughs> so there's something that's sort of, you know, competitive almost about it and um, sort of secretive. I mean, I think people like to have their special spots where these mushrooms are growing. But as, as Dane was telling us, like the act of harvesting mushrooms in and of itself is not dangerous to the ecosystem. This is the fruiting body of mycelium which is sort of the network uh, underground and the um, mushrooms themselves are, are, it's good to pick them, but you need to do so responsibly in the areas where you're going. So not trampling, you know, root systems or not, you know, going off trail where you're not supposed to be that sort of thing. And Fort Stevens though, it, it appears to be is a place. Um, I think one of the reasons it's so popular is because you can kind of go pretty much anywhere in the park. He was saying and harvest mushrooms wherever they grow. Yeah. Uh, so basically, um, Dane and Chad, our rangers guiding us, were were great, and like they definitely wanted us to learn about the mushrooms um, and how to how to harvest them responsibly. But I will say that, like in our research in who we were going to have on for this video, <laughs> we learned very quickly that people are one territorial about their mushroom hunting spots um and two i think there yeah there's just a little bit of competition going on uh with mushroom foraging and you know people want to be able to keep their go-to spots their secret spots um and you know i got a lot of responses saying like hey this is just something that's very trendy right now and uh, I think there's just a little bit of worry about what might happen with mushroom foraging in the future, if that makes sense. Um, so we had to like kind of tell a line here about how can we educate people about uh, this mushroom foraging experience and uh, still encourage people to go out there and do it responsibly. Yeah, you know, Vicky, I'm in in general pretty much across the board against any sort of gatekeeping of public lands. Um, you know, and that comes to places to go hiking, places to forage mushrooms, foraging other plants. I don't believe in secret spots, and I understand there's a lot of fear about overforaging or about you know someone beating you to your spot and getting those mushrooms or doing damage to the land. But I think as long as everyone is you know being responsible harvesting as much as they need and not more than that um, and being cool about it, that there's, there's really no reason to freak out and no reason to keep people from the knowledge about how to do this very basic thing that humans have been doing for all time. You know, I, I think it's important to share that information that, that that's my opinion. I know there's a lot of people who feel differently about that, but I'm very much of the belief that this is, you know, a, a, a time honored human skill that we should be able to share. And, you know, I think showing people places where they can do that responsibly, safely, find these really delicious mushrooms is, I think, I see no problem with that. 
exactly. And so Fort Stevens is a great place for, you know, beginners who are interested in learning more about mushroom foraging because they offer these great hikes where you can learn with experts. So with all that being said, why don't we jump into the different mushrooms that we found uh, on this recent trip? Yeah. Okay. So we met up with our guides at Coffinberry Lake. So it's um, a lake right there in the park. There's a nice parking area, some picnic tables. We rocked up. They had, you know, like you said, Vicky, um, mushroom samples and the guidebooks and the tables. They had a fire going and a fire ring. And uh, we chatted for a bit. And then they took us off on this trail that leads just right there from sort of that picnic area, a uh, paved pathway off into the woods. And, you know, it, it's hard to say where exactly this was without being like, you know, X number of paces from this landmark. <laughs> uh, but at some point, Dane just sort of stopped and pointed to an area of woods and said, follow the trail into the woods there. And you'll find this spot <laughs> where I know that there are some white Matsutakes that grow. And I, I, in my head, I'm going, what trail? <laughs> there is no trail here. <laughs> like, I don't even see like a game trail, but I, you know, uh, had my hat on and my jacket on and I, you know, sort of made my way through the, the freshly rained on, uh, branches and brush and kind of ducked and crawled in there. And sure enough, once we, we all got in there, there was a little patch of, you know, three or four or five Matsutakes growing right out of the mossy ground. It was it was pretty cool to experience because, yeah, I had the same feeling like there is no trail here. And then as we're like <laughs> bushwhacking to get in there, you know, branches are like pulling my hat off of my head and we finally get to that uh, mossy patch. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, there they are. And there's like light streaming <laughs> down through the trees, almost like a spotlight. And it's like, oh, there they are. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think there was like three or four maybe of like smaller of the matsutake and then there is one like big boy uh in the back uh and it, it was super super cool um so after we spotted them um you know we're like okay show us how you properly pick one of these and he pulls out his uh instrument that is one side is a mushroom knife and the other side is a brush for cleaning off the mushroom. Um, and so how would you describe, Jamie, how you you get one of these out of the ground? Yeah. So what, what he was saying is you want to kind of, you know, with like one hand kind of grab the mushroom and the other hand, you want to kind of get in underneath the soil down by the stem of the mushroom with, the, with your knife and use that sort of, you kind of pry with a knife a little bit and twist and turn and pull on the mushroom with the other hand. And it just kind of pops right out. I found it to be really easy. Um, much easier than even like picking an apple, for example. Um, you know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I know some people have sort of different methods, methodologies, and, and ideas about what is the ideal way to harvest mushroom. But he was saying, you know, it's, it's getting to get a bunch of the stem, um, get it out of the ground and it's pretty easy. And once you get it out of the ground, he was saying, you want to sort of use your knife to scrape or cut off some of the dirt on the stem and then if you, if you have a little brush like he did, you can use that to brush off some of the sand or some of the duff that is on the mushroom itself and toss it in your basket and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. um, we did bring a, a sort of a charming little um, basket for mushrooms. Um, having something that's not like a plastic bag is good. Um, that kind of makes the mushrooms all slimy. If you've even gotten them from the grocery store, having like a wicker basket or a paper bag or something like that is, um, I think, definitely the way to go. Yes. And so we got three or four there. Was there any difference for you, uh, you know, getting the smaller ones out of the ground versus like the bigger one that was in the back? I mean, you know, the bigger one, you know, it was quite a bit taller. So there's just a lot more stem. Um, so it was less of a twisting and pulling and more of just sort of like, you know, getting the knife down into the ground and, you know, cutting the stem down low. Um, so it's maybe a little bit easier, but again, it was all so easy to, to get them out of the ground that, um, I, I, I wouldn't say that any, any of it was difficult at all. Well, it made for uh, a really great filming opportunity getting down there while you're, you know, getting these out of the ground. And I could, it was just all happening in like slow mo in front of my eyes. So uh, it was awesome to see. And I'm kind of jealous. I should have picked some myself. Oh my gosh, that's right. You didn't. <laughs> I, didn't. <laughs> I was like purely in uh, video shooting mode. <laughs> that's right. Well, you have to go back and, and pick some another time, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that was sort of the main um, attraction, I think, was these white matsutakes. But Dane, of course, had other spots, other mushrooms to check out. So he said, you know, we've got these, um, this other spot I know where there are some king bolites, which are also known as porcini mushrooms. So um, we went, walked back to the picnic shelter, got in the car and drove a short way through the park to really just, it was like the RV dump station by the campground. <laughs> and there was a trail right next to that dump station that led through the woods. Um, and, you know, there weren't like a ton of mushrooms, but there were definitely a lot of mushrooms growing kind of here and there of different kinds. Mm -hmm. And he pointed us out to, I, I would, I don't know if I would have seen this if, if he wasn't there, but he pointed out a porcini just growing right next to the trunk of a tree. And, you know, he was saying there's, if you know what kind of, environment each mushroom likes, then you can kind of look for the trees. You can look for the sunlight. You can look for the ground and you can kind of suss out where you're going to find a particular mushroom that you want. Um, that's a lot of information. So I loved having a guide who can just be like, there they are. <laughs> They're right here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was really nice. So the porcini mushrooms are a bit different. They're a bit like, um, heftier, um, and chunkier. Um, I found that to be a bit easier to get out of the ground, but again, it's, I think kind of the same process, get your knife down in there, you know, cut some of the stem in the bottom and just pull it right out of the ground. It was very easy. I love also with mushroom foraging is that like you see something that's above ground and we were talking to Dane about this. It's like an iceberg because there's a lot more to it that is underground and you have no idea. You could pull something out and just keeps going and going. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, um, yes. So we found a few of those. Uh, and then, so, cause we were purely looking for ones that we could cook and eat mm -hmm. afterwards. So those two, um, were what we were looking for and the ones that Dane helped us find. But we also saw just like random ones that, you know, aren't going to be tasty exactly. And then we also saw ones that, you know, maybe you should stay away from. So Jamie, um, how did Dane exactly tell us like, which ones will make you sick? Which ones are the ones that are known for being very pretty, but you do not want to eat these. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, what Dane was saying, and I've heard this a lot from from different uh, mushroom folks, is that there aren't a ton of mushrooms. There are, in fact, very few mushrooms out there that will kill you, um, that mm. you absolutely need to stay away from. Um, the majority of them, you know, you can eat, but might maybe they don't taste very good. Or, um, you know, maybe you'll get a little stomach ache. The one that people know about, I think, most commonly is the Amanita muscaria mushroom or the fly agaric mushroom. Um, and that's the one that's kind of red and has white spots on it. It's like the cartoon mushroom everyone knows about, and it grows <laughs> everywhere, and it's extremely easy to identify. And this is a mushroom that um, is edible, um, but it takes a lot of preparation. So it has a certain toxicity to it that you needs to either be boiled out a few times or cooked out. Um, but it's often used for medicinal purposes. I know, um, some people use it for like a sleep aid because it's, um, it's those toxins in it. If you leave a little bit of them in, it can make you feel sort of very sleepy and heavy. Um, so it's good for people who, you know, maybe, uh, have, uh, you know, can't sleep at night. Um, I know that there are some cultures who use it for spiritual purposes as well. Um, people talk about it being sort of this hallucinogenic mushroom. And again, that might be more true if you, you know, don't do any preparation, but you know, I, I've known folks who, you know, you boil it a few times, dump out the water each time, and then you can just cook it up like any other mushroom, saute it in butter. And it's, it's totally fine. So, you know, it, it, each mushroom is a little bit different. And I think the idea is sort of knowing, you know, how to prepare it and knowing what you're, what you're getting yourself into when you're harvesting it. So I think the idea is not like, if you don't know about mushrooms, the idea is not to go out and just start picking stuff and then figuring it out later. The idea is to go out with an idea of here are one, two, maybe three mushrooms that I know how to identify that I know are going to be safe. And I'll pick those. That, that seems to be the safest way to go about doing this. Right. And uh, one of the things Ranger Dane was telling us about was just over the years, you know, how he learned how to identify these different mushrooms and, uh, you know, looking at a, at a book can be very different than, you know, actually going out and looking at them in real life. Uh, but over the years, you know, 
he has become an expert in this. And uh, anyway, the the one the the very uh, quintessential mushroom that is red and has the white dots on top. While it does need to be cooked properly, uh, it is also just very cute to look at. And I was very <laughs> excited to see that one. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. If you're like not sure about mushrooms, just going and taking pictures of them or just looking at them <laughs> is also very fun. Yeah. <laughs> It is awesome. I was just like, I was in heaven. I was like, oh my gosh, look at it. It's so cute. <laughs> I couldn't get over it. It's just this, yeah, stubby little thing. Oh. Okay. So anyway, as far as tools that are needed, you really just need like a knife. You don't definitely mm -hmm. need to have a brush. Although like this tool that Dane had with him was very cool. And if you want to be as cool and legit as Dane, you can go out and buy a half knife, half brush for your mushroom hunting. Exactly. You get a knife, a basket. I think that you should be pretty much set with that. All right, Jamie, let's get to the good part because not only were we able to forage these mushrooms, we got to eat these mushrooms. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was great. It was so great. And originally we went into it, um, you know, we brought some camp, a camp stove and we brought stuff uh, to cook with. Um, but upon our arrival, Dane had built a campfire at one of the picnic shelters for us. And uh, we actually got to just cook these mushrooms over an open fire. And it felt so cool. Yeah, what he was saying was the matsutakes in particular are really good when they're roasted, um, especially if you fire roast them, get a little bit of a char on them. And yeah. so we did that for both those as well as the porcinis we harvested. And my God, what a luxury. <laughs> so we were, the four of us were just standing around this fire, um, roasting slices of these mushrooms. And uh, Vicky, this mm. is like masatake mushrooms for folks who are not aware are like pretty valuable mushrooms. Um, I was just doing some research before we started recording here. Um, earlier this year, um, Washington Post had an article talking about um, China, where these are really popular. They can sell for like at seventy dollars a pound at like the lowest end. <laughs> there is like this like a very big underground masitake scene where people are like you know making serious money off these mushrooms. So to have some of these and just be like really casually eating them around a fire <laughs> was a really strange and really cool experience. And they tasted really good too. They tasted so good. Granted, I am like a mushroom lover. If there's any dish on a menu or anything with mushrooms that I'm going to order it, but I was not expecting how good these would be after just like roasting them on the fire. Literally nothing on them, uh -huh. just a little bit of char from the grill over the fire. And uh, I, it did, I mean, I'm sure it would be delicious with the sauce, something to dip it mm -hmm. in, a little bit of salt and pepper, but it was really flavorful just by itself. Yeah, like kind of uh, slightly nutty or like, you know, it was really chewy too. I think that's the thing about them. There's like, it had a nice sort of um, texture to it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So how did, how did you kind of compare the taste between uh, the Matsutake and the Porcini? I thought the Porcini had a, had a, a, a stronger taste. I thought the Matsutake, it, it, Matsutakes are known for their smell. Um, sort of like a musty smell. Um, and the taste is sort of similar. Not that that's a bad thing. It's a really nice taste. Um, I thought the, for me personally, I like the porcini taste a little bit better, but once you got, like, if you got a good char in the Matsutake, like that, that little charred bit was somehow next level. Um, and I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> but it was, <laughs> it was just really, really good with a little bit of that char on it. Yeah. Seriously. And uh, the the porcinis did take like a little bit longer because they're like thicker. Um, so I feel like just once you get the, the right cooking time, you can really perfect them and uh, have a mushroom feast, which is exactly what we did. <laughs> we really ate to our heart's content, these mushrooms. We were passing them around, the four of us. And, you know, after a while, I'd be like, I can't, I cannot eat any more mushrooms. Um <laughs> This is this is simply so much. What a what a decadent experience. 
Exactly, exactly. We were like literally had a full lunch of mushrooms and I was content. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so if you are looking to go out on one of these mushroom hikes with Ranger Dane, um, you are able to, he does them every fall. So unfortunately, um, he's all wrapped up for this fall, but you can join him um, again next season and you can look for those details online but he does a few of them every fall and they tend to be sometimes even larger groups so um you should definitely get in on that if you have any interest he is such a wealth of knowledge and uh really provides a fun experience yeah it's just absolutely wonderful i highly recommend going out with a guide in fort stevens is a beautiful spot also you know it's a great excuse to get out to astoria to get out to the ocean um, to the Columbia River and check that area out. Uh, for folks who want to go out uh, on their own, whether this fall or next fall or whenever, it's um, you know pretty simple. If you know like when you're going, what you're looking for, the regulations are pretty lax. It, typically speaking, if you're getting like a gallon or less, you're probably going to be pretty good most places, and that's a, a good amount. That's like a bucket worth of mushrooms. Um, that's I think a pretty good amount. And so you shouldn't have to worry about getting any permits. If you're getting mushrooms to sell or you're getting larger amounts, then most places will require that you do get a permit or you're simply just not allowed to harvest that much in that area specifically. So definitely check with either the national forest or the state park or whatever uh, a land management agency is in charge of the land that you're going to be on before you go. But typically speaking, if you're just going to get a few like we did, you can do that pretty much anywhere where they grow. Exactly. And in, in Fort Stevens specifically, Dane basically just said, as long as you're not trying to walk out with a wheelbarrow full of, <laughs> full of mushrooms, you know, you're good. You're good. So Vicky, I, you know, I don't know how you, about you, but I feel like after having this experience, I, I feel like something about going out and doing this gives me a little bit more confidence to go out and do it on my own more. Not just in like knowing what like uh, a King Bolit or a White Matsutake looks like or knowing how to prepare it, but just like the idea of going out there, picking something from the ground, cooking it and eating it and like not dying, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> something about going through that process just makes me feel like not only do I feel more comfortable doing it in the future, I feel like I want to do it more. I'm, I'm kind of sad that we're at the end of mushroom season now because I want to get back out there and do some more foraging. Exactly. Uh, I think I'm probably going to get a book or two um, on mushroom foraging just to read up <laughs> even more about it um, or go out uh, next fall with Dane uh, and get a little bit more experience. But it was such a fun experience. So I will definitely be back and uh, do more mushroom hikes in the future. Well, folks, happy mushroom hunting to you all if you are doing that this year or next um, but for now, we're going to wrap things up. So until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast and our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you're interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at Oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale and Andrew Thien. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen. <laughs>